After Saul came to know Jesus as his Lord and Savior, it took time for other Christians to accept him as a friend. After all, many of them remembered how terrible Saul used to be. But Saul continued to speak boldly of the Lord Jesus to everyone. Saul was so bold that the disciples had to move him away from Jerusalem for fear that some Jews would kill Saul. Now the Jews in Antioch were building a strong new church, and Saul went up to be with them. Now there were at Antioch, in the church that was there, prophets and teachers, Barnabas and Simeon, who was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Think about this. God is in the process of causing his church to grow. The new Christians know that the most important thing to do is to minister to the Lord. How does one minister to the Lord? Picture yourself as a servant in biblical times, and you want to properly serve your master or Lord. You would constantly be attentive to him, waiting for his command. You would listen carefully to make sure you heard your Lord's instructions. You would not let anything distract you from accomplishing the task he gave you to do. These men loved Jesus as their Lord. To minister to God, they fasted. That means they stayed away from the distraction of food to direct their attention to the Lord instead. These men also prayed. They spoke to God and carefully listened to hear their Lord's instructions. Jesus is Lord. It's a blessing to be able to serve Him today. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. The good news is that the Lord loves His servants as friends. Saul, Barnabas, and John, who is also called Mark, are off on a missionary journey that will take them by boat across the Mediterranean Sea to a large island. So, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they reached Salamis, they began to proclaim the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they also had John as their helper. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they found a magician, a Jewish false prophet, whose name was Bar-Jesus, who was with the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence. This man summoned Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. Think about this. Barnabas and Saul will meet the proconsul. A proconsul is a powerful administrator. Evidently, the good news is being heard by many people on the island, or Sergius Paulus has heard a little of the news, but he wants to hear more from the messengers. Unfortunately, the enemy has a representative close by, Bar-Jesus, who is a Jewish false prophet. What is a false prophet? A false prophet is one who lies about hearing God's word. A false prophet seeks to lead people in a way that will benefit him, and a false prophet is not concerned with the way God wants people to go. A false prophet is not accurate about telling what will happen in the future. A false prophet is good at deception or fooling people. Maybe this is why the Bible calls Bar-Jesus a magician. Many people are out to fool others, so you need to be careful. Jesus warned his followers when he said, Many false prophets will arise and will mislead many. Because of this, it is very important to read your Bible and pray that the Holy Spirit will guide you so that you will not be fooled by the magic of the enemy.
Barnabas and Saul are confronted by a false prophet who is spiritually blinding people so they cannot see the truth. But Elymas, the magician, for so his name is translated, was opposing them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, who was also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, fixed his gaze on him and said, You who are full of all deceit and fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease to make crooked the straight ways of the Lord? Now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and not see the sun for a time. And immediately a mist and a darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking those who would lead him by the hand. Think about this. Another name for the false prophet called Bar-Jesus is Elymas. Now Saul was also known as and called Paul. From now on we will call Saul Paul. Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit, and it did not take long for Paul to see that Elymas was a false prophet in giving people the wrong information. To give people the wrong information is to keep people from seeing truth. God wants Sergius Paulus, the proconsul, to see the truth and to come out of the spiritual darkness that Elymas has caused. Through Paul, the power of the Holy Spirit has now caused Elymas to go blind for a time. Hopefully, after a time of blindness, he will come to see Jesus as his Lord and Savior. The good news is, Jesus brings light and truth into a dark world, and even false prophets cannot stop it. the Holy Spirit has flowed through Paul and caused God's judgment and punishment to fall on the false prophet Elymas. God's judgment falls on Elymas so that others will see Jesus as Lord. Now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and not see the sun for a time. And immediately a mist and a darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking those who would lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had happened, being amazed at the teaching of the Lord. Think about this. Sergius Paulus has seen the hand of the Lord and judgment fall on Elymas. Because of this, Sergius Paulus now believes. What does he believe? He believes that Jesus is Lord and the words of Elymas are false. Paul shared the good news with Sergius Paulus, and he was amazed with the teaching of the Lord. Are you amazed with the teaching of the Lord? Are you amazed when you read God's Word? Never stop being amazed, and never think of God's words as common or ordinary. Now Paul and his companions put out to sea from Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. But going on from Perga they arrived at Pisidian Antioch, and on the Sabbath day they went into the synagogue and sat down. Saul's name has changed to Paul. Paul and Barnabas shared the good news in the Jewish synagogue. The people begged them to come back on the next Sabbath, Saturday, and tell them more. The next Sabbath, nearly the whole city assembled to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy, and began contradicting the things spoken by Paul, and were blaspheming. Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, since you repudiated and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life. Behold, we are turning to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have placed you as a light for the Gentiles, 
that you may bring salvation to the end of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord, and as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed. Think about this. Remember, Gentiles are everyone in the world who is not Jewish. When Paul said, I have placed you as a light for the Gentiles, he was quoting the Old Testament, where God wanted the Jews to be a light of truth to the world. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations, to open blind eyes. The Jews were not doing as God had asked them to do. Now the jealous Jews were trying to blind Gentiles from the good news. God will not let this happen. Paul, a Jew, has decided to go to the Gentiles and concentrate on bringing them the good news. All Gentiles should rejoice because it is by God's grace that we are saved. We have done nothing to deserve this wonderful treatment.